What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is another Chance Encounter. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. We're seeing uh, we're seeing more properties like this being built in front of a house. Gonna be torn down soon. I understand that there are power lines that are just kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg, and that there is a commercial real estate building. I'm joined today with Arsenio. How you doing today, Arsenio? Doing great, Dan. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know it's late where you are, but I got to tell you, really honestly, I'm really happy today because my very favorite audience member is here today. And why is my favorite audience member here today? It's because this is a chance encounter where I interview commercial real estate investors, syndicators, and operators. And why do I do that? Well, part of it is because it's the law. You actually have to know each other before you can actually involve each other in your private deals, especially 506B ones. But you really need to find out what kind of overlap you have with anybody who's in your in industry. And uh, that's what I'm up to. But before we get too excited about uh, finding out what you're up to, Arsenio, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit for the audience? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, glad to be here. Um, my name is Arsenio, Arsenio Hart, not Arsenio Hall. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm actually an active duty military, uh, active duty Marine out here in Okinawa, Japan. Uh, got into the real estate game uh, last year, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, started my education experience uh, in 2020. And I started with Rich Dad Poor Dad, like most investors, they start with that one. And then it was just all like, boom, I just hit the ground running from there. Uh, so last year, 2021, I uh, had two opportunities and I just jumped on it uh, without even really knowing everything about real estate and everything mm -hmm. about uh, the deal that I um, invested in. I mm -hmm. jumped on it. So I started with the single family house in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from Memphis, Tennessee, the same within that same week that I closed on a uh, single family house, I was uh, introduced with a syndication mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunity. So I jumped on that without even knowing what a syndication really fully is. Mm -hmm. I just jumped on it because I heard passive income. I heard about the the type of return I will uh, receive. And I just started up my journey there. So uh from then, I went on into uh, another platform as far as my education experience. I went from um, uh, a master class in uh, commercial properties, uh, obtaining mm -hmm. commercial properties, building a team, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with uh, other active duty members, uh, veterans, and and their spouses and, and dependents. So. Uh, from then on, I, I, I now focus on multifamily commercial uh, real estate properties. And uh, right now, just looking for my team and, and, and been looking at deals and just growing from there and building my network. Uh, and, and, and right now, it's, it's been a fun ride. I, I, I've been connecting with a lot of people and just continuing on uh, this journey with the mm -hmm. commercial real estate. That's really awesome. You're definitely in the right place because uh, also like general in general, my audience is commercial investors, commercial syndicators, con commercial uh, operators, and they're all looking to build their team. And so uh, you, you're doing a great job of letting them know what you're up to. But before we get too excited, I need to hit that button and then I need to hit this button and show my screen. I need you to check your eight. And I mean, you check your eight on your screen. So so you like your your eight. Well, okay, you're five on the screen. It's under this little screen here. I need to, you need to check to make sure that that ugly red button isn't there, okay? It's, it's, you need to change it to the gray button, okay? What you do is you click on it. It says subscribe on it, and if you click the button, it'll turn gray, and it means that YouTube will pay for these videos instead of me. So I need you to do that, but let's get the motivations. Very often on this show, uh, the commercial investors I have, maybe they are just getting started. Maybe they don't have any deals or anything like that. And in that case, they'll know why they're doing it, but they won't necessarily know what they're going to be doing in it. So I go through these motivations first. 
So the first motivation that I found, these are real distinct motivations among commercial investors. The first one is preserving their purchasing power. What that means is they've already got a nest egg and probably what's going on is those assets provide cash flow and that's what they use to make ends meet. But as inflation rears its ugly head, they need to make additional acquisitions to stay off the effect of inflation. But if you're in this position, you're still more of a buy and hold type rather than going for uh, more transactional uh, deals. But that's not really me right now. I'm not there. What I am doing, though, is uh, I am trading time directly for wealth. So my background is in tech. Specifically, I own a CRM agency, and I've been the CTO of a real estate firm in, uh, in Ohio. But uh, the problem of making a salary or wage is you're paying way more in tax than anybody else. And uh, so it hit me is like, how do I work? And then I get some equity in return for what I'm doing. So that's why I'm in this. Okay. But that's not a very common motivation. The most common one I found is people are looking to either leave the door open for their retirement or they're trying to fast track it. And that makes perfect sense. Now, really what this means more than just retirement is it's people are trying to take control of the time. Okay, they want to get their time back. Maybe it just means they want to work fewer months per year, fewer weeks per month, or fewer hours per week. But regardless, that's what uh, they're up to. But they're going to be in stark contrast to the, to the last two motivations. The next one, they're just plain ambitious. They want to buy their whole town and they want that generational wealth. They want to make sure their great grandchildren never have to hold down a day job. That's what they're up to. And they're great people. These ones who want to, or who are very ambitious and looking for that legacy wealth. They're great because they're going to keep on hustling into their 90s. That makes them a great teammate. And the last group, they're also going to be hustling into their 90s, but that's more of like a charity thing. Some people pick a sector of society. Sometimes it's animals. Sometimes it's the environment. Some people want to send people to Mars or whatever. But uh, regardless of what you're going to be doing for a group of people or, or whatever you're doing, you have to get that, uh, that financial uh, situation sorted out. After all, you know, librarians are great people and they do wonderful things, but they don't usually have their names put up uh, over hospitals. So that's uh, what some people are uh, doing all of these acquisitions for is because they're trying to save the world. So Arsenio, of those, uh, of those five different motivations, what combination of them describe you best? Like what, what, uh, which of those really sound more like you? Definitely fast track to retirement and also helping, helping people. Like I, I, I just feel like investors in the you know, commercial real estate uh, they, they, you, you help so many people, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you're not only creating jobs, you're creating a uh, living space for um, families, uh, affordable living spaces that, that can vary, right? Mm -hmm. Affordable, uh, but you're, you're providing jobs, you're providing housing, uh, you're providing opportunities for investors that invest with you. Um, and then fast track to retirement. Uh, 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 me being in the military, yes, uh, 20 years you get that uh, retirement, but why not cut that down to 10 years? Why not cut it down to five years? And that's why I, I uh, changed my trajectory in life to focus on more multifamily and the commercial side of uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. And it's a brilliant thing to be doing at your age too. That's, that's really fantastic. But uh, let's go on to the next question here, which it has to do with tolerance for risk, a tolerance for risk assessment. And it's just a fill in the blanks. It sounds intimidating, but please fill in this blank. There are many popular investment asset classes, but I think blank is too risky. What do you think, Arsene? Mm -hmm. It's too risky well, I for you think to invest it's in. too risky. Hmm, for me, let's say Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. I love it. I think it. that's just too risky for me. I, I, I just don't know about it. Yeah, maybe that's just me. I grew up, you know, around Pokemon and all that stuff, around that era, you know, with the cards and all that stuff, holographic cards and stuff. But yeah, I don't know much more than that. That was way back in third grade. So Right, right. Here's my retirement plan right here. My son got a, a Mew uh, in, in a pack just recently there. I, had, I just realized that as you were saying it. That's, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, it, I, I completely agree. Anything like that where you're uh, – uh, where you, you have no ability to force appreciation and you don't make any money for owning it. So it's not like you can have a museum exposition of your, uh, 
of your Pokemon cards and charge admission. I'm sure one day you'll be like some people will be able to do that, but like oh it, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Right. Possibly, it's possibly already out there. We just don't know it yet. Maybe. Right. Right. Exactly. But. On to real estate. Now, one thing I do in every single episode of Chance Encounters is I go through the Dan Does Deals commercial roll die with the six different rolls on it, and you can get your own copy for free. You don't even put in your email address. Like, what a moron I am, right? So you should always ask for the email address, but if you go to dandoesdeals.com, you'll be able to download and print out your own copy of the die. And the reason why I do that is because I want you to be able to effectively communicate on the subject of commercial real estate deals okay I want you to understand how to explain this stuff because if you're in this business you have to learn how to explain it before you'll actually be able to make any money and the other thing too is I need to know what core competencies my guests have and you need to know where they fit in so let's go through these first up the repositioner the repositioner I got a ton of glare here so you, oh there we go now it's starting to adjust so repositioners are looking at a bunch of different properties and they're doing a bunch of paperwork what exactly are they doing when they look at all these different properties well there's a fancy word for it the first thing they're doing is underwriting and all it means is they're doing the math they're figuring out first of all because they're an acquisitions person they're going hey is this building actually making the amount of money that the seller says that it is but uh, the term repositioner not everybody uses it like there, there are about three different sides on this die where some people use the term investor to mean all three of them and I'm trying to get more specific than that but uh, the term repositioner uh, I chose that one and some people use it, but the idea is how are you going to change the property to find more up upside? That's what the repositioning is. Now, the easiest way for a repositioner to get upside is definitely finding more advantageous lending. If the lending is cheaper then the property makes more, that's very simple, but let's assume that that's not on the table. The first step that a uh, repositioner would do to try and find more upside is to go to the operations team and stop those Benjamins from going down the toilet. But of course there's more, to uh, operations than just unclogging toilets and mowing lawns, taking out trash, collecting rents and all that kind of stuff. Uh, specifically me personally, I'm getting on to uh, a different sponsors teams uh, for the marketing piece because of all of my uh, operations and marketing experience. And that comes in uh, to keep the vacancy rate low, uh, you know, also programming and stuff like that. But operations is, um, it, it's a great way to reduce expenses, but it's usually not enough these days because real estate's so hot. So pretty often the repositioner will need to get a contractor team to fix the place up and make it nicer, you know, so nicer uh, uh, appliances, you know, countertops, things like that. When you add those improvements, new tenants are very happy to come and pay more than the previous tenants. So that's basically part of the play, getting the, uh, uh, the, the upside that way with the value add. But if the repositioner is like me and they have the problem of being from the internet, then you're gonna need a local. You're gonna need boots on the ground, somebody who can be there in an hour or two. Cause that's not gonna be me. In an hour or two, I'd still be at the airport. So you need somebody who can take care of things like that. And of course that sounds like all of the owners, but uh, it's not, Ever, there are more people who are involved. And when the repositioner turns around to the financier and says, hey, I got a, apartment complex, a multifamily, a commercial property worth tens of millions of dollars uh, financier. Do you happen to have, say, tens of millions of dollars you want to lend me for this? And the financier will look at the team and the deal and all that kind of stuff, but they'll say, hey, wait a second, there's one thing you haven't told me yet. What is this thing? It is who is bum, 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 the KP. A lot of coaching programs, they skip discussing this piece, but it's so important in terms of the loan because if you want to be eligible for a commercial loan, somebody in the fold has to already own a similar asset. Okay, so if you want to buy a 350 unit apartment complex with your team, somebody has to already own a 350 unit apartment complex or something similar. On top of that, there are a couple other things you need. One is a certain amount of liquidity, and then the entire team of uh, GP owners would also have to have a balance sheet of at least the amount of the loan. But if you got all those pieces, you've got yourself a commercial real estate deal. So Arsenio, where do you see yourself fitting in into your next deal? Well, you know, obviously I can't be boots on ground, so I can't be uh, the guy that's there looking at the property checking out and doing the due diligence and everything so i would definitely be looking forward to um 
having someone already in the in the local area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say I would more than likely be the the repositioner in mm-hmm. in, in in all of those options. That's that'll be the best fit for for myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, beautiful. So then the next question would have to be where and the way that uh, I'm, I want to ask that the way I usually ask this is I use what uh, we call a buy box. So when commercial real estate investors are saying, hey, what you're looking for these days, what's your buy box, what's your ideal property? They're asking for three things mainly. The first one's geography. Where is it? Okay, what states, what possibly what counties, possibly what neighborhood? Okay, it all matters. That's the first one. Second one is the size. And we're talking about multifamily here. Multifamily, the size is determined by like some people go by the dollar amount, but that's too iffy of a number. The unit count tells you way more about what that person's actually up to. Okay, so like how many units are there? Now, of course, other types of commercial real estate, like industrial and warehousing, it'd be off of square footage. Uh, and then, uh, but unit count also works on uh, on retail, mobile home parks, and uh, self storage. So basically, that's the size part. So you need the geography, the size, and the third one. They use the same word for two different things, and I hate that. It's class. Okay. The first meaning of class is the condition of the building. So is it old and beat up, or is it brand new and ho hum, or is it luxurious with all the amenities and all that sort of amazing stuff? That's all class okay the other version of the meaning of class it has to do with the area that the property is in so they are looking for what's the crime rate like and what are the school districts like uh, for an example but both of those different class uh, parts they rate them the same system as with uh, uh, with grade school where it'll be like C minus you know B minus B plus A minus and so on like that so Arsenio as as far as uh, what uh, you and your team like the people who you already have are looking for uh, can you give some details of uh, of what uh, somebody can bring you absolutely absolutely what we're we're looking for um, well, the markets we've been looking in is, is the northern Alabama part. Uh, that's Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Madison, Alabama, uh, Madison County, Huntsville, Ca- Huntsville County area. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's one of our top areas that we're looking for. That's just because of spa- they're building a space force down there. They got an FBI CIA team going down there. Uh, we're looking for 40 plus, 40 to 100 plus units mm-hmm. um, in that market area and looking for uh, also for class type B plus and or B class and the C class area, uh, mm-hmm. we're looking to add more value to to the uh, distressed properties or uh, the the mom and pop properties where they've just been hanging on for it for a long time and just ready to get rid of it and 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 give it back to uh, well and sell it to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's pretty much what we're looking for. It's just something with meat on the bones that we can add value. And then when the five, six years come, to, come around, give that money back to the investors and, and, and maybe re, um, uh, re, uh, research uh, more, more oh, sorry, going right. through another property. Yeah, sorry. Right, right, right. That makes perfect sense. Okay, cool. So then uh, my next question, it has to do with people. And uh, my favorite thing about commercial real estate is that because it's multifaceted, like none of, nobody's going to be all of the size of the die in a typical uh, commercial real estate uh, property or deal. And uh, even if they are at any time, they're not going to be that way for any real amount of time. So uh, because it's multifaceted and you get different people with different roles, uh, it, it's great because we're such a supportive community, but even still, we're all better suited to help some people more than others. Me personally, because of my tech and marketing and all that kind of stuff, I'm always on the lookout for more sponsors and KPs. And that's because if you're just starting out, you're not going to have the foundation that'll support a budget for a guy like me. You're probably better off getting somebody who's young and you know is willing to do all the grunt work. It's not that I'm not willing to do grunt work. It's just uh, it's a premium, right? So I'm always on looking for, for these sponsors and KPs. Uh, Arsenio, uh, I, I don't know if you have any 506B deals right now, but you can get in trouble on the internet for enticing investors, whatever that's supposed to mean. So don't entice investors, but you can name uh, whoever you're best suited to help. I imagine you probably want to talk to owners 
directly of uh, of these different commercial properties. So you can figure out if uh, if their property is a good fit for your portfolio. But I can also understand maybe you want to meet some beginners or something like that. But uh, just don't entice investors specifically. But uh, who who can, who would you really like to help in uh, in commercial Arsenio? Absolutely, Dan. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, Owners for sure, you know. I I, I just want to talk to them, uh, or just not not uh, enticing you, okay? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I I the owners just just so um, they understand like I want to help them uh, with uh, getting rid of that property or uh, selling it off to to myself so that I can provide more to my team and more to the people around me, mm -hmm. and 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 again providing uh, a, a stable, safe, and secured asset to those that invest with me. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I love it. And uh, if, if people, if you're a perfect fit, if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way to reach you? Like, well, we ended up meeting through some, some meetups. I'm always on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a great way to reach me. How about you? Yeah, same, same here. So LinkedIn uh, is Arsenio Hart. Uh, just reach out to me there. I'm also on Instagram. Uh, it's the Arsenio Hart because somebody, for some odd reason, had Arsenio Hart already. It's just, I don't know many Arsenios out there, but apparently there's another Arsenio Hart. But the Arsenio Hart on Instagram and then Facebook, same thing, Arsenio Hart. I keep it simple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. You keep on saying Arsenio Hall, and I keep on thinking about Kevin Hart, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I don't know if you're, you're related to him. That, that guy kills me. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's my cousin on my third, uh, on my uncle's side, actually. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> right. I'm going like, <laughs> yeah. Of course, that's the thing, too, is I know that uh, Kevin Hart, his personality type, I think it's like, hey, I'm your third cousin. Is like, get off my phone. Click. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a Kevin Hart move, I think. Because I think <laughs> that's he'd, true. he'd be pretty clear where that ball's rolling. It's like, oh, oh distant yeah. relative. And that's what you're opening with, huh? <laughs> whatever could you be asking for <laughs> anyways i only got one more thing and it's actually for you it's not for arsenio once again i had to check that your your eight under under my qr code here there's an awful red button i want all of them gone because you know honestly if youtube starts paying for this stuff that makes way more sense to me uh it's totally free to hit the subscribe button uh all it really does is it means that my videos might show up on your list of suggestions but you don't have to watch those other videos. I just appreciate you joining for this one. So thank you for that. And Arsenio, it's been great you joining me today. Uh, it's been awesome getting to know you a little bit better. Absolutely, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity. This has uh, been a very, very, very joyous experience. First time on a podcast. I didn't even think I was worthy, but it's just great. And uh, any, I say if anyone's like interested in, in getting into the real estate, don't be afraid. Just jump into it. Just get into it. Uh, learn as much as you can because it starts with that education. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Chance Encounters. Make sure you do 506B Me after this. And the way that that works for you, if you want to be a 506B Me member, if you're at a live event, a conference, or, or in a Zoom call or something like that, all you have to do is have your very own QR code that comes when you sign up and then if somebody has their own QR code scanner just like this then my one has it in its phone automatically so I can scan even faces and stuff but you just scan the code just like that and then it'll add you to that to their watch list so that way you can uh, they, they can watch your video, make sure that you're compliant, know your level of sophistication, and all that kind of fun stuff that the SEC wants us to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye.